In the years 1900 to 1950, the railway dominated every aspect of life in Allendale, the railway ward of Barrie, Ontario. For men, railway life, despite its dangers and hardships, had the allure of adventure and male bonding. You see, the railroad men are a little different than a lot of people. You see, we went to work. We were together for maybe, uh, well, we'd be together for a day, I don't know, two days. And the conductor and the two brakemen were living in the van. They slept in the van, eat in the van. One old boy did the cooking. And uh, you run the engine, well, you were on the engine all at, for 12 hours, maybe. And uh, there's nothing else to do but sit and talk. And uh, there was a togetherness. But for railway wives, life could be lonely, confining, chaotic, and difficult. I wouldn't want that life again. I mean, uh, while I was doing it, I. Uh, well, you're in a different world, I think, and, and God gives, just gives you the strength to keep on going. Being a, of a faith, I just, God grant me the strength. That's all. It was mine, and I had to accept it. And uh, so what you do? You can't do anything about it, you accept it. But it wasn't a social life. It wasn't much fun. The men's schedules could be random and disruptive to family life. It was an un uncertain job and that when you went away you didn't know when you're coming back sort of cruel and the time that when my youngest lad was born my husband come down from Warren Bain and uh, of course I was overdue and he was waiting and the locomotive foreman kept phoning up and saying when are you going back to Warren Bain and he says well I'm not going back to my wife has the baby he says, you know, he says, I'm not married to the railroad. He says, I'm married to my wife. And he says, I'm not going back until. So he, the baby was just a week old when he had to go back up. Oh, it was cruel. You'd get up Christmas morning and think, oh, well, he's maybe four or five on the board. He's safe. And uh, you'd get your dinner ready going and phone ring. Got to go to work. Your life was like around the clock, like, you know, I wonder if he's going to get called at 11 o'clock. I wonder if he's going to get, then you go to bed, and then before you know the phone would ring, you have to get up in the middle of the night, get the lunch ready, get his clothes ready. And just keep enough spending money for himself, and then I had to budget the rest. <laughs> it's just so much for the rent, and so much for groceries, and so much for lights, and there wasn't too much left, I'll tell you. She had to do everything. Had to pay the bills and look after the, the boys and the, everything. Railway work was also dangerous for the men. During my days on the road, I was in five wrecks and I was, uh, I saw 14 people killed out of cool 14 people out of cars. And you never knew when you grew up what was going to, what was going to happen. Women's accident and death benefits in the early 20th century were not enough to live on. A few widows even had to give up their children to the Children's Aid Society. Many more opened boarding houses or provided sewing and laundry services. The stress affected everyone. 85% of them were heavy boozers. They were heavy boozers. And uh, a lot of them died young. A lot of them died through accidents. Quite a few were let go. That's the trouble is we all work for our husbands. He's like number one, like, you know, like God himself coming in the door and out the door, you know. Oh, uh, he died. I used to say to him all the time, well, you make me so sick, I wish the heck he'd run off the track, you know. Then I prayed like half said he wouldn't, you know. And of course, I mean, there's been some cheating going on in his lives too. I mean, when these men are away and everything else. It's a hard, hard road. And of course, I guess some men stray, and of course, maybe some women do stray. How do I know? The 
women had to learn to stand up for themselves. I can remember my mother always said that she wasn't going to go to Toronto and raise her family down there because my dad would have to be away like from Toronto to go to North Bay. Uh -huh. That's why we never went to Toronto. I said, oh, I said, you're just the guy I want to see. And he said, how is that? I said, well, I said, why wasn't Davy brought home when Mr. Parks retired? I said, he should have automatically been brought home. Told him to wire Davy to Jones to come home. When Davy came home, he could have killed me <laughs> because he was on a work train making darn good money. And I said to him, I don't care whether you were on a work train or what you were on. I said, you should have been brought home. And I said, that's it. More or less, the reason I went with him was to bring him home so he wouldn't get, you know, stay too, yeah. too long with the guys. I'd usually go to try and bring him home. Women viewed their domestic work with pride. I don't want to go to work once I have my children. I don't know how people can do it really. You know. <laughs> well, like, I think if you're in your 20s or younger, maybe you can, but uh, I was just like a home person. I wanted to be in the house. I wanted to take, keep my family. And it never bothered me. Well, in those days, they didn't really. Their husbands didn't want them to work for one thing, you know. And they figured they were needed at home with the children. If he didn't want me to work, that was okay by me. <laughs> <laughs> and they found comfort and support in their communities, their church and union organizations. Well, I belong to St. Mary's Choir and um, with uh, my brothers and sisters not being too far away, they came to our place, you know, and we did have uh, a group that we used to play bridge with, and later on I joined the bowling club and I bowled for 21 years. Oh, it was so friendly and everybody knew one another. Yeah. And you'd go next door, play cards, there's no TV or that then, and we'd have the greatest time. Popular histories of railways focus on the world of men, their grand accomplishment, dramatic accidents, and technological innovations. Yet it was the unseen efforts of the women which were critical to railway operations. With stamina and self-discipline, they held it all together. The family, the finances, the emotional and physical well-being of the men, and the traditions which were passed on from generation to generation. They were the unrecognized but integral part of the great railway legend.